Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the court of the EDI Jester. How are we all? Um, hope you're well. Oh, God. It's winter, in it? <laughs> winter, come in. I can sense the wolf. I know it's actually autumn, but it seems to me that the nights have just come sort of like trammeling in. So when I get up now, what is it? What time is it now? 5.15. When I get up, it's like, you know, really dark. It's weird. But I'll get used to it, as will you. Um, so I'm sat here with false lighting, trying to get me to look anything other than a fat bearded gay. <laughs> And I'm not very good at it. Listen, I hope you're all okay. Because uh, um, I found something interesting. <laughs> From sciencealert.com. Sciencealert.com. Well, I mean, what is wrong with these people? Oh, buy me a coffee if you can. Will you subscribe? That's the most important thing. Subscribe and share if you can. So I can keep going. Nobody's listening to me on Twitter anymore. My, you know, my, my engagement has dropped. But I don't know what the hell's going on. Really. I don't. You know, I don't know what's going on. It's just, maybe I'm just, you know, people have gone, yeah, one trick pony. Fell up with him now. Here, my glasses are steamed up. It's because it's getting cold, isn't it? Oh, although I must say I'm looking forward to it. There's something about the, you know, it's dark by 5.30, you know, you've got your slippers on, your fleece, sat there. Something about it that's quite cosy. There is something of a hobbit about me. So yeah, let's go back to Anglo-Saxon times um, now to discuss the presence of non-binaries <laughs> and the gender identity, which of course worried Anglo-Saxon people so much because as if they didn't have anything else to care about. Because <laughs> let's be honest, to give a toss about a fantasy system like gender identity, you're already going to be living in Anglo-Saxon Britain, are you? You know what I mean? We haven't got enough food. Go and kill some animals so we got some clothes, right? And what do you what do you think this is? It's meant to be a home. It's a few bits of mud and some straw. Now, can you do better than this? Let's discuss my gender identity. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Um, this is beyond the pale. I don't think... Um, I don't even know if Science Alert is a serious site. This may well be some bunch of nutters. But this has been done by James Davison, The Conversation, right? Um, <laughs> there are a significant number of Anglo-Saxon burials where the estimated anatomical sex of the skeleton does not align with, with the gender implied by the items they are buried with. Absolute insanity. Absolute insanity does, does not align with the gender implied by the items they were buried with. Despite having a carving knife, we have no idea of knowing that Barry was in fact an early Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> These people are insane. Some bodies identified as male, they mean male bodies, they can't say it, see, as male, have been buried with feminine clothing. How do you know? How do you know? Can you imagine Anglo-Saxon times, right? <laughs> Not easy. Let's, can we just put, can we agree on that? Not easy, right? Dying of 30 because of your teeth. Not easy, okay? Being killed by hordes of, I don't know, angry. Who would have been angry then? The Scots, the Welsh, the Irish. Who were we scrapping with in England? <laughs> I imagine sheep were angry. And the cold. I just, come on. Some bodies, identified as male, have been buried with feminine clothing. So you've got some poor bloke's gone, bloody hell, it's cold. I'll, I'll stick my wife's dress on. <laughs> he then dies in the night of a heart attack. And science alert <laughs> thinks this is some extraordinary revel revelation. Right, he's, he died. He's wearing my knickers. Yeah, but he died. Right, OK, so what happens now? Well, you can't take him off. Why? Well, our Anglo-Saxon burial rites mean that you, you're buried in the clothes you were wearing. For God's sake, he's dressed as me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Smith, it's just not possible. I don't want him going, no, I'm sorry. It's going to have to stay. I don't want the rest of the Anglo-Saxon society knowing my husband was a cross-dresser. <coughs> he wasn't a cross-dresser, was he? Yes, he was. But I thought he did it because it was cold. Oh, they'll find any excuse. <laughs> and for the most part, <coughs> it says here, um... And some bodies identified as female have been found in the, in the sorts of warrior graves typically associated with men. <laughs> the, 
The, <coughs> the irony is that the only people that were able to make that kind of distinction <laughs> were, would have been the very rich and wealthy in, in Anglo-Saxon times. And it's funny, I imagine this distinction is being made by the very rich and wealthy, or certainly the very comfortable, the luxuriant, <laughs> the luxuriant ass pipes in academia. <laughs> Coughing on their port. <laughs> Do you reckon? I think so. Because it's just cobblers, isn't it? Cobblers, right? I've been bet found the sorts of warrant. There's a wonderful <coughs> scene in Monty Python. Do you remember when he calls her when he calls her madam and it turns out it's a bloke or the other way round? I can't remember which. He's a peasant. It's an holy, holy grail, isn't it? Come and come and see the violence inherent in the system. <laughs> you can't call yourself king just because some watery bint throws a sword at you. <laughs> Go find it. <coughs> In the archaeology of early Anglo-Saxon England, weaponry, horse riding equipment and tools are thought to signal masculinity, while jewellery, sewing equipment and beads single femininity. And for the most part, this pattern fits. So far, though, no convincing explanation has been put forward for the burials which appear to invert the pattern. <laughs> That's because they're in one. It just isn't the thing. <laughs> I am looking... What are you looking for? Mist. Where are you looking at? Where are you looking for mist for? In the fog. <laughs> right, okay, found any mist in the fog? No. <laughs> <sighs> it's a PhD, somebody's doing a PhD. Somebody's doing a PhD in querying Anglo-Saxon burial chambers. <laughs> so far though, no convincing explanation has been put forward for the burials which appear to invert the pattern. So my PhD research or asks whether the uh, whether looking at these atypical gendered burials through the lens of trans theory and the, and the 21st century language of transness <laughs> has the potential to improve historians' understanding of early Anglo-Saxon gender. No. <laughs> Can you imagine when he's got into his viva? And there's these three people, these three historians sat there, some of them crusty and old. They're bound to be, aren't they? I'm a professor, I'm tenured. And this guy's going, women are all about trans transness and the trans lens and trans theory. Um, and they're all sat going, okay, right. Right, okay. Be prepared to run if he starts anything. <laughs> right, go on, young man. Now, Danny LaRue. <laughs> What? A load of Who's paying for this crap? Oh, oh. Atypical gendered, gendered burials are generally excluded as outliers in excavation reports and subsequent research. This re right, okay. This relies on anachronist on the anachronistic idea that historical societies followed a system of sex, gender, and sexuality aligning with nineteenth-century Western standards. Right, you can't change a sex into a. It's just people cross-dressing, right? Or it could be a woman cross-dressing trying to enter into a very male world or a male cross-dressing so he doesn't have to. <coughs> that may still be it, right? This idea is so common that many people believe these three aspects of humanity remain unchanged throughout history. But such an approach may mean that there are aspects of how gender was understood in the early Anglo-Saxon England circa 450 to 750 CE. <laughs> God. That are going unrecognised today. Well, yeah, possibly. Possibly. Using approaches from trans studies, which acknowledge the potential for genders beyond the male-female binary in historical cultures, allow researchers to approach these burials more critically. There is nothing critical thinking about this, but there is definitely the approach being critical, as in critical studies, critical insert subject, critical penis studies, Critical coffee mug studies, critical uh, wheelbarrow studies, critical cucumber studies, right? That's, you know, these types of things that the universities are funding now that the government's going to stop quickly, one hopes. Um, nothing critical about it. It also brings these graves and the lives of the people buried in them into meaningful historical research rather than leaving to be discarded from studies as outliers. So this is, you know, 2000 <laughs> nearly 2,000 years ago, and they're digging up this poor bloke's grave who was a bit of a cross-dresser. Right, if these people are... If there's a heaven, right, that up there now, the, the wife's turning to the husband and saying, told you. Why did you have to do... 
look now, look, they think you're a crossdresser. Well, well, they know you're a crossdresser. It's 1800 years later and they know you're a crossdresser. Well, I didn't mean to do it. It was cold. Rubbish. You've been, you've been telling me that excuse for 1800 years and I'm no longer having it. You're a transvestite. Now shut up. <laughs> it's just insane. It also brings them, uh, these graves and the lives of the people buried in them, into meaningful historical research. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Gender has no meaning. It's nonsense. So it just can't, can't be meaningful, can it? Rather than leaving them to be discarded from studies as outliers, Elven, no, sorry, not Elven. I just get such fantasy. I'm in that mode. Eleven burials, Elven burials, Eleven burials from the 5th to 8th century found in the pre-Christian cemetery of Buckland, Dover, were designed as discrepancies in their cemetery excavation reports. This was due to a perceived misalignment in the sex of the skeleton and the gender associations of the items they were buried with. This makes them a good place to begin exploring an interpretation of these burials through the lens of transness as a possible explanation for this discrepancy. A closer look at two of these burials, grave 30 and grave 93, offers insight into the complexities of gender in the period. It's absolutely, it's utterly bonkers, right? He's talking about, right, 400 CE, okay? 400 CE, 400 years after the birth of Christ. People were dying of all sorts. You had to have 14 children if you wanted to keep one. And he's going, well, they must have been very concerned about their gender identity. You know, she just lost her 13th child. And her husband's going, does my bum look big in this? Absolutely insane. I'll see you later.